Hey, Brenda. Okay, praise the Lord for those who are coming in. We're just getting ready to start our Bible study. Praise God. Another powerful lesson tonight. I'm glad you're tuning in. Just waiting on a few folk as they're coming in. Go and share with someone else. Let them know we're coming in. And God has got a powerful word for us tonight. We're going to try to get through, this is our lesson three, and so we're going to try to get tonight to some ways for you to develop and get blessed by your patience, but also show you the importance of why God wants us to use patience as our first line of defense. It's going to be a blessing. Almost there. Give ourselves about three more minutes as folk are tuning in. As you come on the chat, just put something in the word chat. Let me know you're on. Because God has a word for you. This is our lesson three. Last week we had a workshop. We were going away, but we're here today to talk about how you can apply this powerful lesson on patience into your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Again, thanks for tuning in and Please uh, share and let somebody know that we're on with a new lesson tonight on something I believe can save your life. All right, let us pray. Father God, I thank you tonight for your power and your presence. I ask God that you would touch the hearts of everyone here. There are people that you know what their need is. God, we know you're able and we know you're going to do what you said you would do. And most of all, God, we surrender right now. Bring us closer to you. Let us realize all the gifts that you have instilled in, our, in us and in our spirit. Let us know, God, when we say no weapon formed against us, we believe that. Let us know, God, that when it's time to repent, we will repent. Let us know, God, if you want us to go in another direction, we will go in another direction. Give us a spirit of courage. Give us a spirit of understanding. And let us realize only those things done for you mean anything. So thank you tonight, God, for what you're doing in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory and honor. Amen. Tonight's lesson, for those just coming in, you need to write this down. We're going to talk about the reality of understanding how your patience or lack of patience can tell you where you are in the Lord. I need you to understand, I've been doing this lesson and I've been getting feedback from some people, but I watch people, they come in and they say, Pastor, that was a great teaching or I really love that, but they don't change. So they did not get 
the full effect of what God was trying to do. And you know, one of the things I like to do is talk practical and keep it real. So the reality is I've watched myself get short tempered. You know, patience means long tempered. When you're not patient, that's a short temper. And many of us on there, you might as well confess, I've watched myself get short tempered. Any, any takers there? And when you are short tempered, I want to show you what happens, how God is using the spirit of patience or lack thereof for telling us where we are. Somebody listening to me, you already are in a position or have some things you've been praying for or watch your life go into a place where you think it's getting worse instead of getting better. And God is saying the blessing that he wants to give you is to teach us how this spirit of patience works. Watch this. Rejection. Disappointment. Frustration. Someone says the wrong thing to us. Anger. People, don't, people aren't moving fast enough. Someone does not return my phone call. I call them three times. Someone promises you something or promises to change and they're trying, but you don't even have enough patience to let them change. I want to talk to you about how patience internally builds you up and puts you in a place where you are blessed and you get closer to God and you become what God wants you to become. A lot that's wrong with believers is we need to understand that the only way we can stop from getting angry, the only way we can stop from falling into a place where we're not close to God is to learn to let nothing move us but the word of God. Hallelujah. Let nothing move you but what God says. But when nothing moves you but what God says, you still can't get nasty with people and think I'm being patient. You can't run around and say I'm being patient and I want to go worship and I want to be what God wants and yet you still Fly off the handle every time something doesn't happen the way you want it to happen. I, I need to tell you, this patience thing is serious. And the first reason is, is because God is a patient God. And in I want you to write Romans 8, 29. Listen to me. We only have one job down here that will cover us. Oh, somebody needs to hear this. We have one job scripturally that will cover us for every battle Every circumstance, every situation, every shortcoming in our life is Romans 8, 29 says this. Whom God did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. God said, your blessing comes when you continue this journey of making sure you are being conformed to the image of Christ. Wow. Now think about that. Because some of us are far away from it. Myself, when I, when I think that God said, every trial I let you go through, every situation I let you go through, every shortcoming I let you go through, is I'm conforming you into the life of my son. I'm conforming you so you can get your miracles. I'm conforming you so you can do what I asked you to do. I'm conforming you so you can be blessed. So watch this. Patience is that key that God is giving us because he's saying we have to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. You know why Jesus was so powerful? Because his one focus, his one line was on doing the will of his father. So when someone got him angry, when something didn't go his way, when he found his flesh building up in him, he didn't get angry about that. He reserved and got himself thinking about and thinking on the word of God. Do you hear me? We serve, we are higher beings than our flesh. We are higher than what we're going through. If you continue to walk around not understanding what God wants to get out of you, you won't be blessed. God is a long suffering God. Amen, somebody. How many know you've done some things that God should not have overlooked? How many can sit there and say, I've been some places, I've thought some things that God should not have overlooked. But can somebody shout amen that God overlooked it? Can somebody give God glory that he overlooked some of the things that I've done in my life and he's blessed me through them? That's what happens. God said, 
you got to be conformed to the image of my son. I and the son, I, I, the father, son, the Holy Ghost are one. So if you want to get the maximum out of your Holy Ghost, keep your mouth shut. Keep your focus on God. Don't let yourself run away. Don't let your tongue run away. And don't let your emotions get so mad that you can't do what God says. Now, one moment you're angry. The next minute you're looking for a blessing. And God said you're off balance. If you learn to be patient, and that means long-tempered, thinking through situations before you speak, before you act, before you do it, man, your blood pressure will go down. Your health in your life will be better. People around you in the world will notice there's something different about you than it is in the world. Those days when I get up and I pray and I'm fully filled up with the word of God, it's like nothing bothers me. And now I'm a living testimony for God. Do you hear me? What, what makes so if your unsaved folks see you, what do they think or what will they say is the dividing line between you and them? Only thing is our behavior, how we act, what we do. So if all of a sudden you find yourself hollering just as much as the unsaved, you not only have messed up representing God, but now you got yourself in a place where the power of God can't come through. Can I tell you the night that you listened to me with a, an, an anticipated ear? Watch this. This patience is something that is godly. Worldly people can't be patient. You can't sit in here and say, because I'm going to learn what pastor's teaching, I'm going to be patient. No, your prayer life, you got to make sure you're observing what the word says, and you got to make sure that you have value in patience. When you're sitting there and something's getting ready to happen, you get a rejection or you get a disappointment. The first thing that happens is the patterns that we've led in our life. And if those patterns just kick right in, I now have been disconnected from God. Second Peter three and nine, write it down. Somebody put it in the chat for me. Second Peter three and nine says this, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. I like that. God is saying, if I say I love you, if I say I'm going to be gentle with you, if I say I'm going to understand you, then I'm not going to go off the first time you mess up. I'm not going to lose my patience with you the fifth time you messed up. I'm not going to lose my patience with you. I'm going to make sure that many of you know what I'm talking about, because right now you're living in that patience of God, aren't you? You're living in that place that you somehow you feel God is right here with you. But second Peter, second Peter three and nine tells us God is long suffering. He doesn't slack on his promises. Thank you, Lord. As some men count slackness. But long suffering toward us, not willing that any of us should perish, but it all should come to repentance. When you lose your patience with someone, even if they deserve it, don't miss this point. Here is how you recoup and grow, long, grow stronger. Here's how you do it. You act like God, no matter what they act like. Man, I know it's tough. I know it's hard. You, you're not telling me. I'm, I'm sitting there as a preacher sometimes. I've lost it. But how many know if I can sit there and not let that influence me, I take on the persona of God. The Holy Spirit in me kicks in. You do know you have the Holy Ghost in you, right? Somebody say hallelujah. The Holy Ghost in you. Instead of allowing your emotions to thrive, let the Holy Ghost thrive. Be that kind of believer that says, when I get to a place, I'm going to represent God and bless him. So the first thing I just told you, we're, we're our only thing on this journey, our only point on this journey, our end of this journey is being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. I got to want that. Secondly, I got to realize that God is long suffering. That's the only reason I'm here right now in the condition I'm in is because God has been long suffering. But I've watched believers not realize how powerful this weapon of patience is. Luke 21, 19 has been our bedrock scripture. So you better get that one. I'm going to give you a couple of definitions, um, excuse me, a couple of versions uh, translations from scripture so you can see the different emphasis that the word has as you go to a different translation. In the King James, it says, in patience, you possess your souls. Listen to me. Understand what it's saying. 
I'm not trying to be a goody two shoes. I'm not trying to make sure that, you know, I'm trying to be, what's the right word? I'm not trying to sit there and show God how good I am living by works. No, I'm trying to really be a spiritual person because my spirituality is the only thing that's going to save me. That word says, by patience, you possess your soul. I'm in charge of my mind when I'm patient. I'm in charge of who I'm mad at when I'm patient. I'm in charge of my emotions when I'm patient. I'm in charge of what the enemy can do in my life when I'm patient. I'm in charge. Somebody ought to say, I'm in charge. Devil, you're not in charge because I'm holding on so closely to the word of God. I'm being so patient that the spirit is talking to me, that the spirit is leading me, guiding me. When you finally make up your mind to say, I will not let this situation steal my sleep, steal my peace. I won't let it steal my future. I won't let it steal, you know, a situation happens and I've been there and that thing can be so bad that I dwell on it when God is saying, no, just be patient. I will bless you through it. Luke 21, 19. Look what it says in the NIV version. It says, stand firm. But that just made me mad. So what? You made God mad. Stand firm. But they should have called me back. They didn't call you back. Why are you turning to an issue? Stand firm. Stand firm just means be patient. And the NIV says, the translation is, stand firm and you will win life. I love it. Stand firm and you will win at this thing called life. You will have a blessed life when you stand firm. When you're not patient, you're running around angry, you're running around upset, and you're upset when the other person may not be upset. And you're upset over something that you had no control over, but what you have control over is whether or not you'll let that move you to a place that you're no longer enjoying the life you live. Watch this. Here's what it says in the Living Bible. For if you stand firm, you will win your soul God said, if you learn how to stand firm, I'm talking to somebody tonight. I feel the Holy Spirit on this. Stand firm. Your blessing is coming. Stand firm. That other person is going to have to turn around and, and, and take, or once you forgive them and once you walk in your forgiveness, once you walk in your patience, that person is going to have to stand firm and realize how blessed you are. The blessings are going to flow to you when you stand firm. Sometimes we go off. Amen. Sometimes we feel bad. Sometimes we feel, sometimes we feel good about, you know, somebody made me mad. So I, I, well, you, I told you to get something. Why didn't you get it? I asked you an hour ago. Oh, I'll get it myself. Now think about what you just did. You just disrupted your own spirit. And not only that, we never think, well, maybe we do, how bad we're making the other person feel bad. Somebody else say, come on, Reverend. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to make them feel bad. I know that. But when you're trying to make them feel bad, what are you doing with your relationship in God? When you be patient, you win over a brother. You win over the situation. You win over the spirit of darkness. When you're patient, the devil don't even know how to attack you anymore because of the patience in your life. That means that every little thing can't tick you off because I'm patient enough to realize God's going to see me through this thing. But when I'm not patient, that's what the lesson is called. I want to share with you tonight what happens. This is not a little lesson I'm teaching tonight. Patience is really how Jesus stood on the cross, allowed them to pull his beard out, allowed them to whip him and curse at him. And he sat there because of the spirit he was communing with while things on the outside were looking bad. He had his inside that was blessed. I I'm, I'm getting myself happy right now. Somebody write, keep your inside blessed. Man, if you focus on keeping your inside blessed. I shouldn't let this circumstance. I know it's a real lack. I know it's a real problem. I know it's a real situation. But if I focus on making sure on the inside, I'm still calm. I'm still blessed. Sometimes, guys, you just got to get to the point where you say, if Jesus could stand it on the cross, I'm going to turn my house into a blessed place by my actions and my reactions to the things that people are doing to me. Look at what I'm telling you here. So when you're not patient, 
All those things I told you about. Uh, being mad, being angry, you know, being sad, all that stuff comes from having an impatient spirit. I'm going to teach now. Impatient spirit. Yes, I know you love God. Yes, I know you sing on the choir. Yes, I know you shout on Sunday. Yes, I believe you are a good believer. But watch this. Believers who were trusting God and loving God, some of the patriarchs of the Bible, it doesn't make a difference. We're not looking at this in terms of good and bad, whether you're a good or bad person. It's whether or not you're practicing the spirit of patience and keeping your spirit patience. And watch what God does. What am I talking about? Man, if you are not patient, here are the things you could lose. Please hear me because somebody may have lost them already. If you're not, if you're living dangerously when you're in a state where you're all infuriated and frustrated, you're living dangerously because now what God had for you, you can't get. <clears throat> Here's what you lose. You lose or you could forfeit some blessings while you're being angry over the fact that somebody did not say thank you or somebody didn't bring you what you needed, you're going to forfeit the blessing that God had planned for you that day because you couldn't be patient enough to receive it. You forfeit your position. Sometimes God's getting ready to elevate you, but he can't elevate you because he's watching how so easily things frustrate you. God's getting ready to put you. Well, some of you have dreamed about where you need God to put you. Some of you have dreamed about what you want God to do. Can I tell you, here's something that'll help you. Your patience will funnel down to your children. Now, I got grown children. And let me tell you something. Can't grown kids make you mad? Somebody ought to say amen. They, they, they get grown, but they still aren't grown as you, but they will get in your face. They will say things. They will do things. But what we have to realize is if we can be patient when they're not, Ooh, this is a hard one. If I can, if I can, you know, you know, you know, we come from that age where I don't want no kids hollering at me. You know, I want to put them in their place. But if you really want to show God, be patient. Somebody said, Pastor, I don't like this lesson. But if you really want to show patience, if you really want them to find God, oh, if you really want them to see that there's a God in you, if you really want them to be blessed, and you know what? No matter how bad our kids get, how much many of us know, we still want them blessed. We want their lives to be at peace. We want them to have it easy. So the best way to do that is, now look, I'm not, I don't know how far you got to go with this. You know, like I'm not letting no grown kids get to the point where they hit me and talk to me any kind of way. But what I'm telling you is if you be patient, watch the word, long suffering, God will work that situation out because those kids will see that you, they have a blessed mom and dad. The hardest people to be patient with is your spouse and your children. I know somebody won't put both hands up. Your spouse and your children. Can't they get on that proverbial last nerve? You still love them, but man, they try your patience. You know why? You know why spouse, children and spouses can do it? Because they know what your triggers are. And you're saying, you shouldn't be doing this because you know I don't like that, right? Come on. I, you know I don't like that, but they do it anyway, don't they? God is testing you. God is testing you. You know, you're saying, you know I don't like that, but God is testing you to see if you can be patient, if you can be long-suffering. So you can forfeit your blessings. You can lose a position. Watch this. You can, God can give your assignment to somebody else. You know, uh, it's our work on this side that blesses us. It's our work. God God gave us the Holy Ghost and just the amount that would help us get through the work. Now, that's a blessing, what I just said. He gives us the amount that will help us get through the work, but he also gives us the amount that will help us get through the trials. When we get through the trials, see, sometimes we're sitting there saying, God, you got to take this pain away. You're going to have to heal me so I can continue doing my job. God said, if you can learn to stay in communion with me and have some patience, I can do that. With patience, and I'm telling you, I've seen people turn their life around by just resolving in their spirit that we're going to lean on the Holy Ghost, not holler at their spouse, not get impatient when things weren't going right, not getting so frustrated their blood pressure go up. You got to the point where they said, I'm going to rely on God. And all of a sudden, healings took place. Uh, 
Uh, they, they had better days. They, they, they were smiling more. Nothing bothered them because they had found their place of patience. Real patience is not when everything is going right. It's when I'm sitting there and everything is going wrong, but I'm trusting God. Can somebody say, God, I trust you? This is bad, but I trust you. You're going to turn my house around. You're going to turn my life around. You're going to turn my mind around. You're going to give me some solidarity and peace. God said, I will do all of that if you will just learn to be patient. I'm going to tell all the husbands, don't, when your wife get on your nerves. And don't act like you don't have a wife to get on your nerves. We all do. Let me flip that. And when you get on their nerves, don't act like you don't get on their nerves. We all do. But if both of you make a promise to stay patient, God will work that out where there will be a blessing flowing through your house, a blessing flowing through you. And the next time your trial come, you'll be able to walk through it. Here's what people don't understand. If I lose my temper and I get angry and I get frustrated, as soon as somebody does something I don't like, what's going to make me be able to be long-suffering when I'm going through a trial? Do you realize when you're in a position of pain or healing, I explained to you that Healing is one of the most vulnerable times in our life. Oh, you can mess up your healing by getting so frustrated that God can't continue to flow through you with the healing. Let me explain it. Healing, I'll put it in this terminology. If you go get an operation and you make it through the operation, that's the first blessing, the first step of the blessing. But do you know how many people have gotten an infection during the healing phase? It's when that pain sets in, you know, the pain medication wears off, the anesthesia is gone, and you're sitting there. People say, well, I got that taken care of. Yeah, but your most vulnerable time is when you're healing. I'm saying that because God is healing you a lot of times in relationships. He's healing you a lot of times because you've asked him for things, but he's saying healing hurts. This lesson on patience hurts. I don't want to not... When you get smart with me, I don't want to sit back and not get smart with you. But if I recognize I'm doing it for a reason, I'm speeding up my healing. I'm speeding up my, my, my joy, my peace in God. I'm getting deeper in God. So I won't lose things. Because God can't, if God can't trust you, he can't give you the things you want. Can I stop there? I can show you many, many scriptures where God couldn't trust someone so he couldn't give them and say, so I'm sorry. well, what do you mean? I'm a good Christian. I read my Bible. I do. I, I praise God. I'm, God knows I love him. Yeah, but I can tell you, like Jackie, Tan, Jackie Chan told Chris Tucker, uh, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? God is saying, how are those words coming out of your mouth when you want me to raise you up spiritually to this place of blessing, but you have no patience. Your lack of patience, oh, write this one down, could cost you physical and emotional healing. You were right at the point. God was getting ready to send you that relief. It was going to be better, but he couldn't send it into the vessel because you had the vessel all riled up. This going to make sense. I'm going to share with you. God told me this. God said, there's some things I need you to do, but I can't have you do them if I know when things get tight, you're not going to stay calm. Mm. When, you're not going to stay calm when I need you to stay calm. So here's what happens. This, this patience thing is not some cute little lesson. I'm just going to be patient. Mm. No, this is spiritual. You cannot be patient without walking in God. So when you're impatient, it means you're out of God. What do I mean? You need to understand something. When you're walking impatient and you see yourself getting all upset, you ought to realize you're giving your flesh power over your spirit. Can you go to Galatians 5 with me and start reading at verse 16? I'm going to read it but, so you can write this down so you have this address later. But listen to the words when Apostle Paul was trying to explain to us about walking in the spirit. Now, he didn't say this was unbelievers and believers. He was saying believers sometimes are so upset they're not walking in the spirit. He's saying that the blessing I wanted to give you 
when I, when I knocked on your door, when the Holy Ghost showed up, when the angel showed up, you were so frustrated with a person sitting around you or mad about something that happened to you. I couldn't even reach your spirit to bless you. I couldn't, I couldn't give it to you because you were so caught up in what you were going through. Look at these words. Galatians 5, 16 through 24 says this. This I say then. He's talking about the spirit fighting against the flesh. Don't, please understand when you're impatient, your, your flesh has won. When, when you fly off and lose it, your flesh now has won. So your flesh is walking momentarily in power. Look what it says. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Uh, when you, I called you five times and I know you got my text. All I asked you to do was one thing for me. I do all this for you. And you couldn't do that one thing. If I sound like you, just put this same in. I, could you do that one thing? Now, all of a sudden, while I'm doing that, God shows up with an answer to my prayer. And he can't give it to me because I don't even hear him. God, I am so, I'm so messed up right now. I don't hear what you're saying. And God is saying, that's because you let your flesh take over. And it was critical. He said, you, but if you walk in the spirit, that word walk is always translated. If I try to live, keep my life in the spirit. So when I find myself at that, pay, that place of impatience, I can catch it. And maybe I won't go off as much. That's something for us to work for. Let's all do that. Let's all work toward not going off as much. <laughs> Amen. Because many of us know we go, we go there, right? All the way there. I, I found myself there and I, I laughed because I had been preparing this Bible study. And God said, see, you're doing the same thing you're trying to teach people not to do. And I just had to laugh. I said, God, keep working on me. Somebody need to put in this chat. Keep working on me, God. I want y'all to, I want to know that I'm reaching y'all. Keep working on me, God. I got some great things I want from you. I got some big blessings I need from you. I want, I got some big things I want to happen in my family. Keep working on me so I can glorify you. Let's finish this, let's finish this reading. Verse 17 says, for the lust, for the flesh, lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another. So you cannot do the things that you would. Did you catch that? Wow. God said, when your flesh is taking over and I'm trying to talk to you and tell you I'll do better, please forgive me. And when you're at that point where you're saying, I don't want to hear it. I know none of the good Christians on the line with me ever said that. But if you ever thought about it, I don't want to hear that right now. I'm sick of hearing that. That's what you say all the time. Why are you doing that now? Everybody, all you got to realize at that point, if God ever flipped the script on us and said, I'm tired of hearing that. Why are you talking to me now? We'd have, we, have, we would have lost our walk in God a long time ago. But aren't you glad that God didn't do what we want to do? So God is saying to us, don't let your lust of your flesh, because my lust says I need to fight back. My flesh say, hey, don't let them talk to us like that. Whoa, let's do something out here. And all of a sudden, because your flesh know, if it can get you in his corner, her corner, you'll be out of God's corner. So the flesh can get you where you're upset. Then, And here, here's the craziest thing about it. After we've done that, sometimes we, we're oblivious to the fact we did it. We're still looking for that prayer to be answered. We're still looking for our blessings to come. And God is saying, wait a minute. Did you... Talk better to your spouse so I can bless you. Did you not holler at your kids so I can bless you? Did you not? Did you make up first, even though it wasn't your fault, so I can bless you? Did you try to emulate me? Did you walk around saying, God, with what you have planned for me, if it's going to be great, I got to act better. I want the great in my life. See, some of, you are, some of you are ready to settle for just a little piddling Christian life of just running around. Uh, um, you know, having a little blessing here, going to church, don't even know why you're going to church. God has great things down the road for you. And God said, the only place I have to start is in your heart. I got to start by changing your mind. And if we could just grab this one little thing, and it's a, it's a little thing, but it's a great thing because it puts our flesh under control. If we could just grab 
the spirit of patience. At a time we want to go off, we would stay in constant communion with God. Constant communion with God. I want constant communion. I don't want a Sunday faith. I don't want uh, when I'm in trouble faith. How many of you know, just like God watches over you at all times, you want to try as many times as you can to have a constant communion with God. Hallelujah. I want God, I want you there and I don't want you to be ashamed of how I'm acting. I know I'm not going to act right all the time, but Lord, if you could just stay there, I'm going to come around. Look what Paul said. He said they're contrary. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. You're not trying to live. See, right now, your faith is not based on, your walk with God is not based on how good you are. Somebody said, uh-oh, the pastor's preaching heresy. No, I'm not. If your faith and my faith was based on how good we are, we wouldn't have no faith. God is not, God is not teaching us to, you know, that's the law. I, I, I don't have to do works. All I got to do is learn how to walk. So I put in there, walk, not works. I got to learn how to walk. It ain't the works. God's still working on me. He's trying to get my spirit to the place where I, I capitalize on the anointing that's in my life. I capitalize on things where miracles will happen. I don't even want to go to miracles because we think we got to be in a certain place. But I'm telling you right now, the first miracle will happen is you would walk around in a life of peace. Man, I want some peace. I want to be able to lay down on my bed and know that my conscience is clear. A clear conscience makes a soft pillow. Hallelujah. If my conscience is clear, if I got no art with nobody, if I got nothing to drift off in my flesh of how I'm mad at somebody, then God can keep that constant communion going. Let's keep reading. Listen to what happens when I'm impatient. I subject myself to the works of the flesh. Look what it says. Now the works of the flesh, Galatians 5, 19, are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, variance, immolations, wrath, strife, sedations, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness. He said, these are the things that you did in your past. So when God is saying the, 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 works of the flesh, it means that at that moment, my flesh is in control and the lust of my flesh is in control. So I'm really out of control with God. I'm not walking in the spirit. I'm walking in my flesh. There was a guy, if you look up the, uh, I was looking at this because I was reading a story. It was very hideous. Um, a guy named Don Stephen McDougal. He was a family friend He's been charged now with killing an 11-year-old girl. He was a family friend that he was supposed to take to the bus stop. But he murdered her. Raped and murdered her. Because when you're walking in your flesh, now I'm going to get you the cosign here. How many of us know that we, when we were walking in our flesh, we did some horrible things in our BC days? And thought it was right. I mean, when our flesh left up, we wasn't going to stop till we got what we wanted. Okay, so I'm the only bad guy here, right? You, you better, somebody better help me. How many of y'all know? If I, I'm not going to stop till I got drunk because my flesh said so. I wasn't going to stop till I fornicated that night. I'm not going home. It's only two o'clock. I'm going to keep trying. My flesh is driving me. I'm not going to stop till I get high. Can I get a witness? I'm not going to stop. That's, that's what I, you got to know that same drive your flesh has now. Your flesh is mad at you because you won't do that. Man, when I was out in the world, nothing was going to stop me from getting what I wanted. And so your flesh is saying, hey, we got to go there. We, we got to get what we need. We, we cannot allow ourselves to be pumped. We can't sit back. This God thing is good, but I can't sit. No, what he's doing is trying to keep you from the riches and the blessing of God. Oh, what I'm saying, what Paul is saying is your flesh and the affections of your flesh. When you walk in the spirit, it's because it's a testament that you're walking in God. If you can suffer, watch this guys, this is a tough one. Somebody makes you mad, but you can suffer 
by internally speaking to the Holy Ghost and giving it to God, then blessings will come in your life. I know I got a witness. When I kept my mouth shut, God took up the battle. When I stopped, God gave me more strength. When I stopped trying to fight it, when I stopped listening to my flesh, God said, now... I've given you the mighty ability to walk in the spirit. You know it's only possible to walk in the spirit because God gave you the ability, right? So let's look at this. Paul's meaning when he was telling these Galatians that was that if you walk in the spirit, you will be blessed because you're going to be walking and the spirit will help you through. There's two surprising things that happen when you understand that flesh piece. Don't miss me. Don't miss me. Here's what happened. First of all, you'll find out that wicked deeds are not harmless. Wow. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying wicked deeds are not. If I cuss Marsha out, I don't do that. Don't nobody buy that. And Marsha sure ain't buying it. But if I cussed her out, but I kept on amening, like I don't understand my deed, how wicked it was. That means I'm already mesmerized by the flesh. Mm, I just hit some Christians, Danny, because you done told some folk off. And when you did, you didn't realize how wicked the wickedness that you've done. So the first thing that's surprising about the flesh, when, when I say walk in the flesh, we all think, well, I'm a Christian. I'm, no, no, no. I'm not talking about, you know, your belief or what you believe. I'm talking about your actions. We don't understand how wicked sometimes our deeds and choices are. But I want to tell you, they're not harmless. There's, there's repercussions for our actions. Now watch this. So I got to learn to walk in the spirit. When I walk in the spirit, God takes all that fight for me. God forgives me. Watch what he does. He cleanses me as he did David. He washes me white as snow. God says, all right, get back up. I got some more blessings for you. But then he turns it over to me and says, can you now walk in the spirit? I got to walk in the spirit. Secondly, fleshly works happen to the godly and the ungodly. Let me give you a couple of biblical examples of what I mean. I just gave you some of our examples. But in the Bible, I want you to show how we think, okay, so I'm called by God. I'm blessed. So my wicked, so if, I, if I'm not patient with somebody, if I, get, if I don't forgive somebody, if I, I get bitter with somebody, that's a, that's a little thing. God said, no, it's not. Here's why. Look what happened to Moses. I just want you to write these things down. I'm, I'm going to try not to go too fast. But Moses, when he found out he was an Egyptian, by faith, the Bible tells us in Hebrews Hall of Fame, he decided that he was going to rather suffer with the people of God. But do you know why Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness? Listen now. Watch this. He made his confession. I'm, I'm leaving the palace. I'm going to rather suffer. I'm a Hebrew. I'm going to suffer with my people. I'm going to serve the Lord. But he went right out in Exodus 2 and 12. It says he went right out and killed a Hebrew, Egyptian fighting a Hebrew. He, he, he killed, there was two Hebrews fighting, excuse me. And he tried to defend the Hebrew slave and he saw himself murder someone and then he was driven to the wilderness for 40 years. Let's, let's put this together. All right, so I'm Moses. I'm called by God. I'm going with God's people. But I see this Egyptian beating up a Hebrew, so I murder him. Then I tell my people, I'm your deliverer. And my own people turn on me and say, who made you a judge? Think about what happened to Moses. Moses got it in himself, his flesh, that he could handle this. And God said, let me send you to the wilderness 40 years to think about this. Wow. So if God is trying to bless us, give us a new assignment, give us a new blessing, give us a new position. He wants to see what we're going to do with the spirit of patience, because you do know that Jesus promotion, when I call it promotion, his fulfillment of making sure that there was uh, all of us could have salvation. When he fulfilled that plan on the cross, he had to suffer to do it. He had to be patient. He had to wait. He had to walk up Golgotha. He had to carry his cross. He had to be beat from judgment hall to judgment hall. All of that, never said a word. We, we sing, never said a moment of word. You don't think Jesus was angry? He was just as much human as he was God. 
But Jesus said, I became obedient to God. Some of you right now, you ought to tell yourself, I'm getting ready to be obedient to God and watch my blessings flow. That's how your blessings come. How your blessings come. And we don't see that being lack of patience is taking us out of place. I'm going to be obedient to God and watch my blessings come. I'm going to pray for folk. I'm going to love folk. I'm going to speak more kinder. I'm going to make sure I'm not bitter with anybody. I'm going to make sure I'm not judgmental. And when we do these things, God said, man, you're wide open for my blessing. So Moses had to go 40 years in the wilderness. And then he finally turned aside. And then God still was long suffering with him while he worked with him. Praise God. Aren't you glad that God see? Here's, here's what God does. Uh, and this, this definitely going to take a hallelujah. God doesn't just love me when I do well. But when I do wrong, he's more gentle to me than when I do well. Because he's trying to get me to the place to know that's how love acts. Love says, and so he can't do any different because he's God. But we now have to choose. Somebody say, I choose to be patient. Come on, your confession is what blesses you. So you got to tell yourself, I'm going to choose to be patient. I'm going to choose to be patient. I'm going to choose to do what God says. And my flesh going to well up in me. Amen, somebody. You're going to be thinking about this and say, I don't know what that Reverend Nungus was talking about. But when you choose to be patient, we say, I'm going to choose patience. You know what you're saying to yourself? When you tell God, I'm choosing patience. I'm choosing obedience. You know what else you're telling God? I'm choosing blessings. I'm choosing the desires of my heart. I'm choosing my family to have favor. I'm choosing you to bless me. I'm choosing to walk in what you have me. I know now, God, I'm taking the limits off. I'm taking all the chains off because I'm going to choose. Now, I'm going to tell you, maybe even be tonight, you're going to have a choice. You're going to have a chance to prove this confession. But you ought to write down yourself, say, I'm going to choose to be obedient. And when you choose to be obedient, man, God does not hold back anything from those who love him and are obedient unto him. Amen, amen, amen. God said, I will bless you because of that. It was the same thing that happened when you don't understand, when you let your flesh take over, you lose. Let me give you another one. Elisha. Now guys, think about this. In 1 Kings 19, this, this is how some of us don't realize that, yeah, we were blessed, but that time when we didn't take control of our flesh, we opened ourselves up for failure and we opened ourselves for the flesh to take over and we lost our spirit. So we had no patience and no power. Watch what happened. Elisha in 1 Kings 19. Have you ever understood this? I didn't understand it. He had just got done defeating all the prophets of Baal. I mean, he did it with a flare. You know, we, we told you the story before, but Elisha was so powerful that no matter what happened, he went to the king and he said, you know, how long are you going to be hot between two opinions? So there's times we're like that. We are full of the fire. We shouting all over the church. We telling somebody how powerful we are. And the next minute, if we're not careful, the Bible said Jezebel just said some words and his flesh took over and he became scared. Don't lose me now. His flesh took over. Now, wait a minute. He's right there on that precipice of power. His flesh took over. He became scared. That's what happens to us. I just got angry at you. Or I just got mad at you. Or I'm not speaking to you anymore. And all of a sudden, I don't realize I've just attached, detached myself from the power of God. But we act like that's the end. But it's not. Look at the consequences he had to suffer once he allowed that to happen. He ran into the desert, ran. Oh, there's so much in this text. He ran into the desert. Many of you have wondered how you got from a place of power to a place in the desert. It's because you didn't look back on that one moment when you should have chosen to be obedient and follow God and patience, how that affected you until God could heal you through it. So all I'm saying is when we lose control of our flesh, Elisha spent so many nights, um, Anybody who has us who suffered with, and I did, I've, I've done it, I've had it in my life before. A spirit of insomnia is actually a spirit from the devil that attacks you so you can't get any rest and peace. But a spirit of insomnia has to be feeding off of something in our flesh that is troubling us. Did everybody catch that? 
this spirit, my mind is drifting. He said, I can't get my mind quiet because your mind, your, your flesh is trying to take you to a place that's out of God. How do I know it's out of God? Because God would give you a peace that passed understanding. And so what God is saying, if you keep your mind on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. Right? We know the scripture. Keep your mind on God. I'll keep you in perfect. But what he means by keep my mind on him is when I find myself in a place that I'm about to lose my patience, I might lose my destiny. I'm going to stay patient. I'm getting ready to bring some other blessings into my life, into my house, into my home. I'm getting ready to bring some blessings. How many of y'all know I want to wake up and walk in some blessings? I don't want to wake up and still walking in that depression, in that pain. I'm going to give you a cure for depression and pain and all of that now. Walk in the spirit of God. Every time something hits you, start rejoicing anyhow. Have hope, have patience, and tell God, I don't know how long it's going to last, but whatever happens, I'm going to be long-suffering because I know my victory is on the way. How many know victory is on the way if I can just be long-suffering? And if I can take control in a moment when my flesh is trying to give me some, you know, some good feedback, you know, let me holler and tell you off. If I can take control of that, Man, the devil can't do nothing when I'm going through pain, when I'm going through trials, when I'm going through struggles. That means I'll have just as much power in my struggles as I do in my pain. I know my wife tells me sometimes, slow down when you teach it. But I get excited, guys. I'm sorry. I get excited about the fact that I know if I can just hold on for that five minutes right now, keep my mouth shut, keep control of my tongue, keep control of my emotions. If I can hold on five minutes, that might be five years of blessing. Because I can hold on five minutes. But I'm telling you, your flesh is not going to make it easy. You got to learn. Patience is a power. That's why when Jesus was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them. We wouldn't be able to just jump up there and say, Father, forgive them. Jesus was able to do it because he walked in the spirit of his father. Remember what he said? Early in the morning, he went to the mountain to pray to make sure he put on that whole armor of God. Got his mindset. So now I'm walking in patience. I know you don't like me, but I'm going to love you anyhow. I know you're talking about me behind my back. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm not going to let that get in my spirit. Amen. I'm going to keep loving you anyhow. You know why? Because I'm letting God make me his vessel. How many want to be a vessel of God and not a vessel of the world? How many want to be, how many want to know that God can work some things through you that the world can't stop? If you would just learn that at those moments when that flesh is telling you to do the worst, you tell yourself, I'm not doing it. I'm going to walk in what God says. You know why? Because patience is our salvation. Galatians finishes with the fruits of the Spirit. Now listen to this in a, with another ear. Listen to this by the flesh will kill you, but the Spirit. What Spirit? The Spirit that connects with God that's in me. I have a Spirit you have a spirit that connects so with God. You don't need a preacher. You don't need anybody. In the middle of the night, in your bedroom, your spirit is waiting on you to lift it up so you can call Jesus into your surroundings. Oh, man, if you knew how deep and strong the spirit of God was. But I got to also tell you, the reason we fail is because the spirit, the, the, the flesh is strong. How many know your flesh is strong? And when we got saved, that flesh is not going to just let us walk in the spirit and be patient and be night. No, that flesh is going to say, I'm still here. So what you're going to have to learn how to do is put that flesh under control and walk in the spirit. How do you put it under control? By walking in the spirit. What does walking in the spirit mean? Get this definition. Walking in the spirit is when I walk, I live. With my mind stayed on God. It's when I have celebrations in my house because I just thought about my God in my house. My God in my, my God, how good he has been to me. So my spirit is the blessing. Here's what he said. But the fruit, there it is, the harvest. You'll start seeing a harvest in your life that it, is something that the world can't even explain. He said, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. I can suffer and not get rattled. I can let you offend me and not get rattled. You know, 
I may get a little rattled, but I got to learn how to control it. I can let you offend me without offending back because I'm trying to act like God. I'm trying to please my father. And God said, if you, if, when those who please him are the ones who he can bless. So how do I be long suffering? I'm glad you asked. We're going to get to this before we close tonight. There are two Greek words for being long suffering. If you could write them down. The first one is marathomia. I'm going to spell it. Marathamia, and it's very important. Marathamia refers to the ability to be patient with people. It's spelled M A K R O T H U M I A. M A K R O T H U M I A. This is the kind of peace that I can be patient with people. So watch this. How do I be patient with people? I allow those fruits to bless. I know somebody listening right now. Okay, tell me how, pal. I'm going to tell you how. I'm going to tell you how. This is how you can be patient with people. 1 Corinthians 13.4 tells us. 1 Corinthians 13.4 says, Love is patient and kind. What? Love is patient and kind. I'm in love, but there's a whole lot of days I haven't been kind. Can I get an amen? Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy, it does not boast, and it's not arrogant. I want you to see the rest of that verse. When people say they love, God tells us love is patient. Love is one of the fruit of the Spirit. Love works with patience. So if I, can, if I say I love you, then I need to be kind to you. How? By being long-suffering, by being patient. Look what he said. So the only way I'm not kind to you is either I'm envious, I don't like what you did, I'm boastful, or I'm just arrogant. You know, I go back to that word we always say, and this, this is what gets us in trouble. The devil puts this up. That's why he got kicked out of heaven. Because he said, who, who, who you think you're talking to? Who? And that's what goes in our mind. I know, I know they ain't talking to me. I wish... They would. All I'm saying, guys, is that when you do that, you miss the fruit God already placed in you. Love is patient. I'm going to teach you how to be blessed in your house. Everybody who you say you love, practice patience with. And pretty soon, you will turn into a brand new spiritual being. Your friends and family won't even know you. Because that patience in you will make you so full of power and peace that they won't even understand. I'm trying to teach you now. So the first thing is I got to practice moral through me. And that means I got to be patient with people. Proverbs 16.32. Look what it says. Proverbs 16.32. Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit is better than one who conquers a city. Wow. God said, if I, that was the ESV version, English, uh, English translation. If I can be slow to anger, I'm better than a strong person who walks around strong. Because when I'm slow to anger, I'm stronger than you are. Wow. Then he says, if I can rule my emotions, man, how many of you will admit with me, by the time you were reining your emotions back in, you had already told somebody off. How many will admit with me, by the time I was, by the, by the time I thought about it, oh Lord, why did I say that? I had already said they deserve that tongue lashing. And then all of a sudden, when you start practicing obedience, th your conscience will come back on you and you'll be blessed. That's how God works. That's why I'm telling you to confess these things as I'm going through this teaching. As you confess, God now puts it in your spirit. And when you go against that confession, your spirit man and your conscience will wake you up. I tell people all the time, I was a good sinner when I, when I was in the world. And watch this. I was a good sinner when I was in the world. I still know how to sin when I'm saved, but I'm not good at it. Watch me. I'm not good at it because my conscience bothers me after I sin. Okay. I thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? <laughs> no. I'm telling you how God works through that spirit. Your con how many know? When I was in the world, I was a good sinner. Now that I'm saved, I still know how to sin. But I'm not good at it because once I sin, 
I done seen the consequences of not being able to sleep and how bad I feel and trying to make it right with God. I don't want to live like that. If I got somebody to know what I'm talking about, I had to learn that I was a good sinner. But now I know now I know how to sin. But man, when I tell you off, I get beat up. Man, when I when I do something I know I shouldn't do with my flesh, I can't sleep. And I'm trying to find a way. I know I'm not the only one. You might as well fess up. Y'all listening to me. How many of you know? Yep, I was a good sinner. But you know what? Every time I sin now, boy, God got it in for me. I get one of them old-fashioned whoopings from God. And that's why I've learned. I may touch it. You know how you say, you know, <laughs> you, may, you may touch a, a live cord once, but you ain't going to do it again. God taught me. You go ahead. Do, do what you want to do. But when you lay down the night, know that I'm going to be whooping you up. I'm going to be all up in your conscience. I'm going to be telling you off. I'm going to be letting you know. Where, and you're going to be sitting there. Sometimes you're going to walk around crying. You're going to be able to sleep because you know you were not supposed to do that sin. But the only way I cannot do it is I got to first make my confession. Confess with me again. Everybody listen. Confess with me again. Say this. I'm going to be obedient to God. I'm going to walk in patience. Confess it. Now, God's spirit can help you keep that confession. Because when you do sin, first thing will come to your mind. Nope. I'm going to be obedient to God. It's like having a heart attack. And you come out. And they tell you what the cigarettes have done or what the fat has done. You know what you do then? For a while. You know, maybe later. But if they tell you to stop eating that. First time you see it, first thing going to come in your mind is those words that got in your mind that said to you, I can't eat that again because I know what might happen. So some of us call down stuff in our life by not being faithful. Man, we, I got to close. I didn't know this hour was going so fast. But let me give you the last one. Mar, uh, Marothumia, Mia is Ephesians 4, 2 to 3 says this. Ephesians 4, 2 to 3 says this. With all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Write that down. The scriptures I've given you, and next week we'll pick up with lesson four. We'll, we'll, we'll finish this lesson, but we're going to talk about hupomone because that's the second type, type of Patience in the Bible. Hupomone is when I learn to be patient under trials. You're going to have to get this one. This is the one that helps you get to your blessing. But Ephesians 4, 2 and 3, I want you to practice. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, I want you to practice. Proverbs 16, 32, I want you to practice on people. I want you to practice on people. I want you to know in your own heart. I'm not trying to save them. I'm trying to save myself. So I made me a, I made me a, a pledge. And, and I make that confession. I try to make it before I get in trouble. If patience and long-suffering is what God said he uses to bless me, then I'm going to be patient and long-suffering. God bless everyone tonight. This is Pastor Duncan saying, I hope you're enjoying this teaching. Go back and look at it again. I'm going to bring next week. We're going to finish this lesson, it'll be part four, but you don't want to miss it because we're going to go in and talk about how we develop that patient spirit and we win over our trials, our tribulations, our situations, and God gives us strength that is abundant. God bless you. Thank you. And please um, hit me up in the chat. Let me know if you're enjoying this teaching or hit us up on Facebook um, and I'll see you next week. Let me say a little prayer because I'm, I'm impressed by God to do that. God, everyone who has heard this tonight, let us realize that there is a power in this patience that I'm going to find out about. I'm going to try to get my flesh under control so that I can have the things that I know you already promised in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Have a good night.